Hello everyone. Welcome to Understanding Elasticity Lesson 1, Relative Elasticity. Most textbooks don't make a distinction between relative and what I call unit neutral elasticity. They just run them all together. And my experience is it's very difficult for students to uh, master the concept of elasticity that way. I even remember when I was a student taking principles, uh, I didn't understand until the end of the semester. So I think this is much better. In lesson one, we'll talk about the conceptual ideas of elasticity, uh, this idea of relative elasticity. And then in lesson two, we'll introduce the mathematics. So elasticity is a word that we use in economics. It just means price sensitive. We might say, how price sensitive is something? How elastic is it? How price sensitive it is? Now keep in mind that there's elasticity of demand curves and elasticity of supply curves. But we're only going to focus on elasticity of demand curves. But don't forget, almost everything that we do with demand curves has its counterpoint, counterpoint sometimes slightly different, but has its uh, equal, its counterpoint, over in elasticity of supply curves. I'm not sure why the elasticity of supply curves is ignored in uh, most introductory books, but it is. And I'll follow that. Okay, so uh, this idea of relative elasticity of demand curves needs a graph. And so what I'm going to do is let me get my image off of here and I'm going to show you uh, how this works graphically. Let's see, uh, here it is. All right. So imagine you had two individuals, individual number one and individual number two. And I hope you can see that their demand curves are slightly different. One is a little steeper than the other. So let's imagine some price. Let's call it price blue. Individual number one chooses this quantity demanded. And individual number two chooses this quantity demanded. Quantity demanded two. So in both cases, at the price P blue, they both choose some amount of the product to purchase. That seems logical. Now let's let the price fall, say to price P red. So if we change the price to P red, individual number one buys a little more. It's kind of crowded here, but that would be quantity demanded red, or yeah, quantity demanded red. And individual number two buys a little more and that would be quantity demanded red for individual number two. So you can see, can't you, that when the price fell from the blue price down to the red price, both individuals bought more. But look at the difference. Individual number two bought a lot more than individual number one. So in the language of economics, we say the demand curve for individual number two is relatively elastic that is relatively price sensitive when compared to the demand curve for individual number one. So, or we could say it the other way, individual number one's demand curve is relatively inelastic when compared to individual number two. Now it's important to keep in mind that this concept of elasticity is a simple comparison of one curve to another. We are not saying that individual number one's demand curve is inelastic. We are just saying that relative to individual number two it is. So that uh, point might seem odd to you, but consider this. Suppose there was a third individual, individual number three, and let's let individual number three's demand curve be really, really flat. Then in this case, let's see, when the price is set at P blue, individual number three buys this amount and then when the price falls to P red individual number three buys a fantastically larger amount way out here I'm kind of off my uh, whiteboard but I hope you can see way way out there so now remember that under the first example individual number two had the relatively elastic demand curve when compared to individual number one. But now when compared to individual number three, we would say individual number two's demand curve is relatively inelastic uh, 
when compared to individual number three. So I'm kind of beating this to death, but uh, it's really important, it'll come up later, that uh, this concept of elasticity requires a comparison of one demand curve to another. All right, so that's the graphical part. Now you might think about, well, what causes one demand curve to be relatively elastic or inelastic compared to another? These factors or these things that cause one demand curve to be elastic or inelastic compared to another are called determinants of elasticity. And like the determinants of demand curves, the list is kind of unbounded and I've just listed the top four. So income is kind of obvious. As your income goes up, you would become less and less concerned with what something might cost. So generally speaking, we would say that as income rises, demand curves become less elastic. As income rises, demand curves become less elastic. Then uh, the second one is the number of substitutes, and in particular, the number of good substitutes. The more substitutes you have, the more elastic the demand curves will become. Oftentimes, I use an extreme example in my classes where I imagine that a person has uh, heart disease and the doctor tells them they need a pacemaker without that pacemaker they might drop dead any minute what would that person's demand curve for pacemakers look like well it would be quite extreme don't you think we would call that perfectly inelastic it would be virtually straight up and down no matter what the price assuming the person could afford it no matter what the price the person would want a pacemaker but if you allow substitutes for pacemakers like maybe there's a regimen of drugs that uh, could uh, monitor the heart instead of a pacemaker or maybe there's some kind of operation that you could take instead of the drugs or instead of the pacemaker the more substitutes the more alternative treatments that person has the more elastic the demand curve becomes then uh, the third one need I've put it in quotation marks because this word need is uh, really a tricky word in economics we almost never use it I'm a little timid to use it here maybe I should have just put instead uh, taste and preferences for uh, the t determinant number three but need simply means the the more you desire this thing the more you need it the more inelastic the demand curve would become now those three are all kind of obvious but the fourth one sometimes escapes students and that is the amount of time that we allow for an adjustment here's a great example suppose that today the price of gasoline were to uh, suddenly rise by say fivefold so instead of being uh, at the moment as I'm making this video it's about 320 a gallon something like that what if it went to like ten dollars a gallon well what could you do between now and next week about all you could do between now and next week is uh, try to drive a little slower try to economize your trips maybe a ride in uh, with your roommate or your spouse or so something like that that's about all you could do but if I give you 10 years or 20 years to make an adjustment a lot of things come into play that aren't really reasonable in a week for example if I give you five years to make an adjustment obviously we would all be driving smaller cars we might actually even make uh, different decisions about where we live and where we work we might make different decisions about the kind of houses that we live in and so forth so the longer I allow you to make an adjustment the more technically speaking the more substitutes become viable so these are the determinants of the uh, determinants of elasticity for demand curves now relative elasticity is a conceptually easy concept and I always teach it first because I want all of my students to understand what we're talking about when we uh, use the term elasticity but the idea of relative elasticity while easy has a serious serious problem and that is since relative elasticity is basically comparing the slopes of say two or more demand curves it can only be used to compare individual demand curves for the same product it cannot be used to compare elasticities of different products for example we can't use the concept of relative elasticity to compare demand curves for say food versus gasoline a very uh, important question especially in policy circles uh, 
Uh, what is elastic? The elasticity for energy or gasoline, the elasticity for food, the elasticity for health care, entertainment, and so forth. It's very important to be able to uh, rank those things, and we cannot do that with relative elasticity. The reason we can't is because since we are just comparing the slopes of two curves, we have to have the units on the vertical axis and the units on the horizontal axis exactly the same. Well, that's not so hard with the price. You know, the price is the units for the price of health care and the price of gasoline are in dollars, so those units are the same. But the physical units of the product are quite different. So we have gallons or liters uh, for gasoline, and we have office visits or minutes with the doctor or some other unit of output for uh, health care. Since the physical units are different, we can't compare the slopes. So what we need is we need some other kind of concept of elasticity that's unit neutral. And that comes up in lesson two. So there's always <laughs> here. Here I am again. There's always good news and bad news from these kinds of things. And the, the good news is that relative elasticity is really easy. The bad news is that, well, okay, it's an easy concept, but we can't use it empirically very often. So then we have this other idea called unit neutral elasticity. The good news is we can use it to compare anything. The bad news is it's conceptually difficult. So you'll probably struggle uh, with lesson two. Uh, I'll try to do the best I can and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find it useful. Okay, good luck.